Hello, welcome everyone. I'm sure Dr. Shabtoshi Banerjee coming back to you again for a very interesting session today. I'm going to share with you today six lesser known organopathics for migraine. I'm sure you know the common polycrest. I'm sure you prescribe the constitutional remedies for migraine. But I'm going to share with you cases where you can prescribe these organopathics with wonderful results, especially in cases of drug dependent migraine, where the patients are taking in painkillers every day to help their migraine and you can prescribe these lesser known organopathic medicines to gradually withdraw the conventional medicines. I've shared with you in different sessions previously how to withdraw the conventional medicines but these lesser known organopathics I'm sure will go a long way to help you in that process. My number one in this list my friends I've used with very good results is amyl nitrosum. Amyl nit is a fantastic medicine which is a vasodilator so if you make an hexagon on amyl nit where it acts as a vasodilator if you think all the vessels are constricted in case of amyl nit all the vessels are in a state of vasoconstriction and your amyl nit will work as a vasodilator so there is a lot of flushing you will find with amyl nit so the face is absolutely flush due to the congestion there is always the surging of blood surging of blood to head and face so because of that congestion there is surging of blood and do always remember whenever your amyl nit will get that migraine i'm feeling congested i'm feeling like a throbbing they're always better in fresh open air that makes amyl nit one of your wonderful lesson on medicines who is always better in fresh open air with that congestive headache with that flushing remember amyl nit there is a lot of yawning and stretching so there is because of the vasoconstrictions like lack of blood supply to the brain so there's constant yawning constant stretching your amyl nit is a fantastic medicine for menopausal hot flushes menopausal headache so there at menopause for amyl nit you'll find a lot of sweating a lot of sweating and as well as the headache so think of the perspective think of a remedy a patient who has this menopausal headache there's throbbing there is congestion there's surging of blood there's flushing and they're better in open air you do not have the broad totality to go for other cases you do not have a broad totality to go for a sulfur or tuberculinum but based on these few symptoms you can always prescribe a wonderful remedy like amyl nit constantine herring mentions that for a stool to stand you need three legs and hence also for a symptom picture to complete you need at least three symptoms so do not use your polycrest do not abuse your polycrest by prescribing it on just few symptoms you cannot prescribe a lachesis you cannot prescribe a sulfur just based on two or three symptoms but you can prescribe amyl nit based on these symptoms which is an important factor there's also a lot of constriction in amyl nit you'll find it's mentioned the collar seems too tight so it comes very close to lachesis and my friends, the best way to remember these lesson known remedies is in conjunction to polycrest you use. If you're using lachesis, you'll always find avenues to prescribe amyl nit. So put a note wherever you have notes for lachesis that whenever I have that constricted feeling in the throat, the collar is too tight, I'm better in fresh open air, menopausal hot flushes with a lot of congestion, with a lot of flushing. If lachesis is not working, I'll try amyl nit. Or I do not have a good totality of lachesis, I'll go for amyl nit as well. A fantastic remedy for a headache with a lot of flushing, a lot of sweating, better in fresh open air. And these are very fantastic indications for amyl nit. Remember the potency of amyl nit if you're prescribing in tincture, remember to use two drops of tincture. Or you can prescribe in 6C in an acute stage, two globules in a cup of water, four to six hourly as and when the pain is there. And you understand, the patient is telling you for my headache, I take painkillers every 8 hourly, every 12 hourly. You ask them whenever you have this headache, do not take your painkiller, you take amyl nit instead. And in that way you can gradually defer taking the use of the conventional medicines. And the patient will always gain your confidence that yes, your medicine is working, your amyl nit is working. And you can use these revenues with wonderful, wonderful effects. So amyl nit is the first medicine in this list. My second one, my friends, with which I've had also very fantastic results and I want you to try this remedy in practice as well, is my number two, Asnia Barbeta. Asnia 
Asmia barbeta is a re small remedy. If you open Borica's Metromedica, you'll find this three or four lines mentioned. But whatever is mentioned is a gem indication for Asmia barbeta. Sun headache. Where you have lot of throbbing and bursting sensation. As if the eyes will burst out of the sockets. As if the temples will, the blood will burst out of the temples. So that kind of throbbing, that kind of a congestive headache. As if the temples would burst, as if the eyes would burst out of the socket. So that kind of throbbing, that kind of bursting feeling you have with Asnia Barbeta. And believe me, in cases where the patient tells, oh, whenever I'm going out in the sun, I pop a, pop a pill. That makes my headache better. Do not Again, you do not have a broad totality for belladonna. You do not have a broad totality for glonoin. You just cannot prescribe belladonna and glonoin based on one symptom. But Asnia Barbeta is such a small remedy where its entire symptom picture is concentrated around this where you have the sun headache, throbbing and bursting in the temples and eyes. It's a remedy for sunstroke as well. So again, remember, I always like to share this. Whenever you have a good totality of a gelsemium, bryonia, belladonna, glonoin for sun headache, go ahead and prescribe that. But where the patient is on conventional painkillers for their migraine, do not have good modalities, do not have good sensations, remember to use Asnia Barbeta in those cases. Tincture or 6C in the same way, tincture here 10 drops in a cup of water, 8 hourly as and when the pain is there, stop as improvement starts or you can use 6C, 2 globules in a cup of water, 6 to 8 hourly acute for the pain. You can also use these medicines in 30C and 200C if you feel my constitutional remedy is not working or my belladonna or my glonoin or my gelsemium hasn't worked you can use asnia in 30 and 200 c as well a fantastic remedy and we i have used this medicines multiple times and also handled down this remedy as an ancestral tip my friends these remedies are there in body case metromedica for the last 100 150 years and unfortunately it has been ignored it has not been used so make sure you go ahead and prescribe these fantastic remedies my third one in this list for migraine is another known remedy which I'm sure many of you have used and practiced is Melilotus. Now for the younger generations, Melilotus Alba, you think that oh it's another remedy for just congestive headaches. So you know how will I differentiate with it with other remedies with my polycrest? What is common with other, other congestive headache remedies? You'll find red face, which is common with other congestive headache remedies. Yes. You'll find a lot of throbbing, which is also common with other congestive headache medicines. So these are the common features, especially for my younger generations, homeopaths. But what you'll find is difference between melilotus and other remedies is they're better by hemorrhage. So either epistaxis or a menstrual flow. It can be a natural hemorrhage. Or it can be an unnatural hemorrhage. Natural hemorrhage in terms of a menstrual bleeding or an unnatural hemorrhage in terms of epistaxis. Much like lachesis also were better by hemorrhage. So either they're better by hemorrhage. But one thing I found very interesting for Melilotus, if you open Borike or Clark's Dictionary, you'll find that with the headache, the memory is affected. There's a line in Borike, memory is treacherous. treacherous. So memory is not playing up, not following with them and the memory is getting dull the memory is getting weak with the chronic headache unable to fix mind even the concentration is getting affected so whenever you have the congestive headaches redness throbbing which is common but combine that with a patient who is better by hemorrhage a and b your memory your intellectual functions are getting affected your attention is getting affected i am unable to fix my mind because of the chronic migraine my memory is getting really poor day by day with the chronic migraine Melotus will come in handy not only as an acute but also as a constitutional remedy in many many cases. Also do remember many times with Melotus if you are prescribing in 30C, 200C, 1M, you will find a very interesting feature is they feel that everybody is looking at me. There is a constant sense of suspicion, there is a constant sense that I am a center of attention and that is also important for Melotus as well. But remember a case of chronic migraine where memory is gradually diminishing day by day with inability to fix the mind, inability to concentrate is a fantastic indication for melilotus in a patient who is better by hemorrhage. So remember the commons, but do remember how to differentiate it from the uncommons as well. So that's my melilotus alba. Again, the potency, tincture, 
6C in the same way. But if you have these features and if you have the suspicious nature who thinks that I, people are looking at me, go for 200C and 1M as well. My friends, my next one in this list is another of my favorite remedies. I must say we should not say favorite remedies, but I do have one for my grain and that is picric acid. When I was a student in my third and fourth years in BHMS, I frequently used to have this headache here when I was studying before my exams. A typical headache here and I used to do like this. This used to make me better. Sometimes I used to go to the washroom and put some cold water here that used to make me better. And obviously in those days I used to, and still now as well, I do ask my father for the advice. He told me take a dose of picric acid 200C. Believe me, within 10 to 15 minutes, it was absolutely gone. Few times I had it, every time I took picric acid, it was gone within a flash. And such is the beauty of picric acid. Obviously, the best experiences are of medicines which you use on yourself and your families. And picric acid is one such example where you have a typical occipital headache. So you have a typical occipital headache. What causes it? Mental exertion, overwork, students, teachers, businessmen, overworked businessmen. So, mental exertion is the causative factor. As I was sharing with you, it was before my exams. So, students, teachers, mental exertion. What makes it better? Better by pressure. Better by cold application. I shared that with you. Again, you will be thinking, why not gelsemium? Why didn't I take gelsemium? I didn't have the dullness. I didn't have the dizziness, drowsiness. So, I didn't have the fear. I don't have the examination funk. That's why not gelsemium. So, better by pressure, better by cold application. You will find in Boricate mentions, it's a summer or hot weather remedy. So, many times, hot weather can precipitate picric acid's headache. So, occipital headache, mental exertion, overwork can trigger it. And they're better by pressure, better by cold application. So that's one area where you can prescribe picric acid as an acute. But do also remember, picric acid is a combination of four great polycres. Why and how I say so? It's a combination of caliphos. What about caliphos? You'll have neurasthenia like caliphos. What the patient will say about neurasthenia? I have pins and needles, I have tingling, I have numbness. That's what the patient will say to you. He'll not come and tell you I'm having neurasthenia, but pins and needles, tingling, numbness. So neurasthenia like caliphos, it's a nerve remedy as well. So that's important like caliphos, nervous prostration. You'll have burning in the spine like phosphorus. Especially in chronic cases of neurological complaints, you have burning in the spine like phosphorus. Lot of seminal emissions, <coughs> involuntary seminal emissions. And that seminal emissions causes great weakness, my friends, like phosphoric acid. You see, the phosphoric component is so important. And lastly, you'll have what we call as brain fag, like zinc. So, combination of four great polycris, the neurasthenia, the pins and needles, the numbness, the tingling, like caliphos. At the same time, you're having burning in the entire length of the spine, like phosphorus. Lot of involuntary emissions and I'm weakened due to the loss of vital fluids, like phosphoric acid. And brain fag, typically, like zinc. Many times in picric acid, you can also have fear of failure in examination. They don't want to work. So there's a weakness, internal weakness, nervous weakness because it's an acid. But these are good enough features for prescribing phosphoric acid. There's always a tiredness, heaviness in the extremities. You can prescribe it for multiple sclerosis. You can prescribe it for different neurological complaints where you have a muscular heaviness combine that with nervous prostration picric acid is a very underrated but wonderful acute headache remedy i i used it in 200 c you can use it in 1m 30 c as well which are good enough potencies for picric acid a fantastic fantastic um, remedy my number five in this list is another very interesting remedy You ask him that, oh, you took a three weeks holiday. How do you feel after the holiday? Oh, I feel so tired after the holiday. Even after taking a holiday for three weeks, I feel very, very tired. And my friends, your Mr. Onosmodium is always born tired. So born tired, if you find someone with 
chronic fatigue. It's as if I was born tired. Even if you give me a long holiday, I still feel tired. Think of onosmodium. But for a migraine for with onosmodium, do remember it's a left-sided migraine. Left-sided headache. What causes it? Eye strain. Sexual weakness. Sexual excess as well. Can cause the migraine with onosmodium. There's always a strained feeling in the eyes. The eyes feel as if strained always. That's important. And what they do to do that, to reduce that, they close the eyes. Better by closing the eyes in onosmodium. There's always a want of power of concentration. The concentration is lacking in case of onosmodium. You see in the introduction, Borikate mentions there's want of power of concentration and coordination as well in case of onosmodium. And with the headache, you'll find the entire left side of onosmodium is weak. There's muscular weakness. There is tingling and numbness. Tingling, numbness. And even you'll find in onosmodium that they have a staggering gait as well, especially of the left-sided weakness. It's a left-sided remedy. Not only with the migraine, but continues to the entire left hand and left leg with the staggering gait, with a numb feeling in the extremities, which is important for onosmodium. Few modalities which are important for onosmodium: motion, jarring is important, and they're generally better by lying down in onosmodium. But do remember, for cases where the patient is telling, "I feel really, really tired. I feel really, really weak, born tired." And having this left-sided migraine, which is radiating down to my arms and legs. My arms and hands feel numb. My legs feel numb. I'm unable to walk in the correct way. I'm having a staggering. I'm having a stuttering gait. And with that, there's sexual weakness as well in onosmodium. <coughs> what causes the headache? A lot of eye strain. A lot of exertion on the eyes. Eyes are feeling strained. And that eyes, as well as the head, is affected with onosmodium. But especially on the left side. Potency which works best for onosmodium is 200C and 1M even if you are prescribing an acute stage that works best with onosmodium. You can use in tincture as well, 10 drops in a cup of water, 4 to 6 hourly, stop when the pain gets better. So that's important about the fifth remedy in this list is onosmodium. And the last one to finish up this list of organopathics is medicine number 6, epiphagus. Another very underrated medicine, medicine not used commonly. But what I shared with you for picric acid, I'm sitting down for studying, I'm studying for long hours, mental exertion, I'm getting an occipital headache. But for picric acid, it's a combination of mental and physical exertion. So I'm out for shopping. You'll find in Borikate mentions, I'm out for shopping, a long day's shopping. And when I'm out for shopping, I'm buying everything for the family. It's mental exertion as well as going in, going out of the shops is physical exertion. So, physical and mental exertion when it's combined together, especially for an example like shopping, epiphagus comes in really, really handy for an acute migraine. That results in the headache. And if you think of few features of the headache for epiphagus, when I'm having this headache, so much saliva in my mouth. Constant tendency to spit. Constant spitting with the headache. You have that with lysine. You have that with epiphagus as well. Where there is a constant tendency to spit. Especially with the headache. So there is a lot of saliva formation in the mouth. And it is a viscid saliva. It is a thick viscid saliva. Which forms in the mouth. In case of epiphagus. The headache of epiphagus is preceded by hunger. So, a lot of increased appetite, increased hunger before the headache of, of epiphagus. And they are generally better by a good night's sleep. So, even if you do not have this picture, think of someone who is constantly in the job of physical as well as mental exertion. I am working, I am going out, it is an outdoor job and there is a constant mental overexertion as well. And I am down with an acute headache after some time. And epiphagus will take care of that headache just on the basis of etiology. And if you have these features with the headache, I have a lot of saliva formation in the mouth. I have to spit constantly. 
Think of epiphagus as well. Preceded by hunger, better by sleep is epiphagus. 30C, 200C, 1M works well for epiphagus. You can use also in tincture, 10 drops, 8 hourly for the acute headache. My friends, I have shared with you organopathics, less unknown organopathics for migraine. Obviously, I have not shared with you Bellarona, Bryonia, Gelsamium, Sanguinaria canadensis, Phygelia. Those are celebrated remedies for migraine. I have not shared with that. But probably I will do another session. I will share with you the common organopathics or common polycrest for migraine. But these are lesser known medicines and have used with very good results. You can gradually withdraw the conventional painkillers. Amylnate, Asnia, Barbata, Melilotus, Picric Acid, Onosmodium and Epiphagus are remedies which have been handled down generations with very good results. And I want you to try and go ahead and prescribe these remedies. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Long live Hanuman. Long live homeopathy.